Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about strikes and spares. I see. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So this is a bowling game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you really, you really pushed it up there, Boat. It's funny. It's a bowling game. Um, bowling is one of these activities that, uh, in my mind, I really like it until yeah. I actually start doing it. And then, like, it's one of those things where it's like, I'll be I'll be hanging out with Eep, or we'll be hanging out with my family, and I'm like, you know, we should really go bowling sometime. And then we go bowling, and it's like, yeah, okay, I'm good for another five to ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never really drawn back to it. It is funny about bowling, and you're right. That's usually the way it goes. Or the or you'll get here's here's when I go bowling. Either there's a birthday party, mm-hmm. time to go bowling. Okay, mm-hmm. you get a sweet deal. Yep. Right. I mean, and, and I mean the sweetest deal. Like you get a free game, free shoe rental, or whatever. You're gonna go. Or if you've got one of those nights where you've got a buddy that's desperate to go bowl, like that's when you go. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like it's very now. I know some people are in leagues and stuff, which is cool. I've always kind of envied those people that would be in a league. But you're right. I'm the exact same way. Maybe once every couple of years I get down there. Not even once a year. And of course, uh, bowling is getting harder and harder to come by here in West Virginia because. In our little area, because they've shut down a couple of the big bowling alleys, and so there's not that many bowling alleys left, and there's not a bowling alley within 20 miles of us. Yeah. Uh, the closest one is more. probably well, I think it, about Nitro. Nitro. That's about 15 miles. It's right by the you. moose. Yeah. Uh, what's your obsession with that moose lodge, boat? <laughs> Have you ever wanted to be a moose? You know, I've, I've sort of... Remember on the Flintstones, where Fred was a member of, like, the Grand Poobah Club or whatever? Yeah. That's what I picture the moose lodge as like. The Royal Order of Water Buffaloes, wasn't there? Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So that's I what Grand I picture... Poobah was their leader. That's what I picture the moose lodge as like. Just a lot of guys drinking, smoking, wearing funny hats. Seems like my kind of place. Well, I've been in the moose lodge. In fact, I got invited to be a moose. Did you know really? that? Really? I did not yeah. know that. Um, the uh, guy I worked with... Oh, geez. There was a guy that I worked with at the computer store who was in the moose, you know. And I'll tell you what the moose is really like, okay? Okay. Picture, like, a hundred codgers, all right, with their wives occasionally eating buffet. That is your... There's your moose slides. There ain't much going on there at the moose. Uh, it's not like the old days when these guys were all young. They were probably really ripping it up. Mm-hmm. Not there. Most of the moose guys are old. Yeah. You know? Lodges and stuff have sort of fallen out of favor, at least in these parts. You don't ever see anybody like, getting in them. It's definitely something that uh, as the, I think it was, it was really created as a product of the post World War II generation who wanted to keep on hanging out with their army buddies when they got back from the war and you had the VFW and you had all yeah. those things, but then you had these secondary organizations and uh, yeah, it was, it's all part of like the, the, the whole like civic fabric of society that's just not there anymore. I remember going past that moose lodge and that parking lot was filled with cars on the side of the road as far as you could see, just packed, mm-hmm. you know, but I don't think they get much action these days. Uh, but uh, um, getting back to the bowling alley, which is right beside the Moose Lodge, uh, we've lost so many of the bowling alleys. And we went, believe it or not, there was one in Milton at one time, Boat. I don't know if you remember that. I do. It's, it was right there by the Piggly Wiggly. That's right. Mm-hmm. Everything we say sounds as, cu- as, as country. <laughs> Did you, you said that Have you noticed we white. live in West Virginia? I mean, that's right beside the Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> where we get our chaw. But uh, 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 I used to bowl in that alley, and it didn't have it didn't it had manual scoring. Yeah, manual scoring. You had the overhead projectors. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, no, no nobody liking that. <laughs> I, that was one that they had a dragon's layer in there. Really? And I just speak, yeah, and it was perpetually jacked up. Hmm. It was one of those ones you put. You heard about these? You put your money in, and Dirk would be getting ready to swing on the on the flaming uh, ropes, and all of a sudden 
the Lizard King would bonk you, and then the game would end. And you'd be like, that, the thing would skip. Right. People would just pound the crap out of those, those games in there. Uh, but uh, uh, I've done the majority of my bowling over the years at the bowling alley in Nitro and the bowling alley up in uh, Jefferson. Which yeah, I believe is gone. The, the now, one that right? just it just closed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that I'm the same way. There, I know that there. Uh, I mostly the one in Nitro. I think is the one town and country is the yeah. one in Nitro. That was where I went most of the time. Although uh, I did go to hunting. There's one in Huntington. I think it was. over. Yeah. Oh, is that one closed I think down? That one's gone. I know they lost at least one of theirs. I know that that was. I remember going there distinctly with your brother and Jamie and, and that that crowd at, yeah. at some point in the past. Um, but uh, the bowling alley was really my biggest exposure to arcade games because you know yeah. I didn't I didn't go to the arcades growing up. I was afraid of the arcade. It was yeah. dark. <laughs> it was dangerous. No, you it went was, to the skate arena. That was also a place where you could get the games. Yeah, right? but you yeah. only had I mean you only had a couple machines at the skate arena. But at town and country, they had like a whole room. Yeah, you know, a whole separate room. And yeah, and most it was, bowling alleys have an You know, uh, my buddy's dad was a pro bowler, mm -hmm. so I would go. I I've been to a like big bowling alleys in Cincinnati and stuff. These places that had bowling alleys is just as far as you could see, you know, and they always had nice arcades or at least decent arcades. Now the arcade scene has dwindled in the past couple of decades. But back when I was a kid, they had, they were really hopping. Yeah. You know, pretty good arcades, you know, a lot of fun. Uh, but much like bowling itself, it seems like that's the arcade part of that's become an afterthought, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I, I don't know, I guess America just lost interest in that sort of stuff, you know, in terms of bowling. Because, I mean, it's it's a sport on the decline. Well, I you think... Know, you never see it on TV and stuff anymore. What, what happened was, is that bowl, I think bowling alleys relied on leagues for income. Because you you have a steady stream of people coming in week after week after week. And, of course, the real money in bowling isn't in the games. It's in the beer. It's in the fries. It's in all the concessions. It's and not so, the shoes. Yeah, it's not the shoes. And so <laughs> when, you know, as as the league started to get fewer and fewer, um, you know, how are you going to how are you going to make that up? You can't get like 50 people every Wednesday night anymore and then you're done. It's over. Yeah. Did, did you ever go to any of these like uh, midnight bowling things or oh, laser yeah. bowling? You laser know, bowling. Yeah, I did it all. That was yeah. uh I mean, it was pretty cool, you know. I remember yeah. that bowling was always one of the things in high school when, when the band, like, you know, you have friends in the band and you all go out and do something together. There's a girl you kind of like that's part of that crew and you want to try and sit yeah. next to her. That was that's that was my bowling memories. Uh, you know, when I was when I graduated from uh, NEC and, and Cross Lanes, uh, they had a bowling party for us. Sort of a, in lieu of graduation party, you get to get the bowling party. I'm not lying. And I remember we stopped by, one of the guys I was in class with owned a bar down in Dunbar. Mm -hmm. And we stopped by there, and he got us all loaded. Wow. Right? And, we all, and then somebody drove us. I don't know how we got there. We drove down to the bowling alley. And so we were bowling, and we had, we, the place was open all night. We were the only ones there, and we could bowl as much as we want. That was the most fun I ever had bowling. And it's the best I ever did because I had the curve going. You know, this is back when I was been working. Mm -hmm. Because my buddy's dad did the curve. You know, oh the, yeah, the looks curve. real nice. Yeah. You know, most of us are jerks. We just, you know, I, I, I what I do is it. I take the ball in between my legs with both hands and then just roll it like that. You mean like <laughs> super duper geek style? <laughs> Why does that surprise <laughs> me, folks? You know, I, I people have mo mocked my uh, bowl. You know, we've never went bowl. I don't think we have. Bowl. I have a unique approach that people have commonly referred to it as the Fred Flintstone because I, I do a lot of I've got do you, do you I mean, do several rotations with the with the arm well, I, before I start with the ball like this mm -hmm. right right at my face then I begin my walking but I'm tippy toeing then I rear way back like this and then I spin it and I turn my head that way oh, and I, man. you know it's just a it's it's a real bizarre, you know, uh, 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 type of approach. Well, definitely, it, it, we'll, it's not fruitful. We'll shoot some. Uh, uh, we'll shoot some video of that next time we go bowling together and put it on the YouTube. We should go bowling. That it would, would be, be fun. fun. Yeah. I uh, I haven't been for quite a while. The last time I went with Luke was Luke, uh, and his and his little one of the birthday parties, and I bowled that a little bit. But they you know the kids. They break those things mm -hmm. down into into gutters. Yeah, gutter guards. What the, what the hell is that? It's, no, I don't like that's that. Setting them up for the rest of their lives. To be disappointed. Right. It's like, wow, I, I bowled a 180 when I was six. What happened? <laughs> what would you say your average score was, Bo, at bowling? If I, Do you have a thought? If I break 100, I'm doing pretty good. If you break 100, mm -hmm. that's pretty weak, Bo. <laughs> I'm not Remember a great bowler. <laughs> Clearly. I, yeah, I gathered that. I, uh, You know, the best guy to bowl with is Hose. Really? You ever, you ever seen Hose I wouldn't bowl? have pegged him as a bowler. 
Hose, to for everyone that hasn't seen Hose, Hose is about five foot seven, right? A furry man, a little chunky. But I've played, I've bowled with him, I've played tennis with him, and he's got guns for arms. Mm. So when he throws the ball, it's like he points all the anger and frustration of his life into one ball <laughs> and shoots it down the eye. And it, it's thunderous, thunderous down there. And his accuracy is not so good. But I've seen him tear up the gutter. <laughs> the pens just fly the out in the <laughs> other lanes. <laughs> He all, I told you, he often hit me in the back during tennis. Mm. This was the same kind of anger he used for bowling. That same sort of thing. Did you ever eat? Did, did you eat much the bowling alley? You know, I like some. I like some bowling alley fries. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? But why are they different there? You know, what, you know, normally I don't eat the crinkle cut fries. I think they're nasty. Yeah. But there's just something about getting them at the bowling alley. And you're sitting there, and you, you bowl, and then you, you just take your hand out of the ball where 8,000 other people's hands have been, and you reach it right down in there in the fries, and you just stuff them in your face. The fries sort of, they, they serve as an antibacterial <laughs> agent. Did you have to mention that? <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Yeah, you're right. That is gross. Well, of course, your feet are where a million people have stood oh, before. Yeah, so yeah. There you go, sweaty people. Bowling, this is a real good uh, prep for the actual game that we're talking about. Well, before about. we get into the actual game, Aaron, we got nothing going on on everythingamiga.com this week, but we do have some stuff going on over there at our YouTube channel. So let's check that I'm out. Looking, looking at it right now. So let's lead off the dance. Uh, for those that didn't join us live, let's talk about last week's entry on the Spectrum boat. Mm. This was quite an entry, sir, if I may say. It was Batman, the Cape Crusader boat. Yes. Now, We've played a Batman game or two uh, in our time on these shows. Uh, and I would say this is uh, one of the more unique entries in the Batman series. You look so stunned just now in the video. I don't know what you just saw. <laughs> it looked like you'd seen Batman walk in. What, <laughs> what the hell was happening last week over there? But this was a quite a, was a neat entry. Hey, listen, this thing was super unique. It had that comic book panel type style i really dug it yeah i thought i I think i liked it more than you no well i don't know i like this one a lot if you'll recall i called this the greatest batman game until arkham asylum so i like this a ton you are known for your hyperbole and your exaggeration (laughs) though if i had a nickel every time you'd said something was the greatest or the worst i'd be a millionaire (laughs) you might be right you might be right (laughs) you're a consistent extremist (laughs) boat so uh, let's move on to our next one. Oh, here's one of mine. So, uh, you know, I've been dabbling a lot with the old Coin Ops Next, which is a uh, front end for PCs uh, to front end all your emulators. And it comes effectively pre built, complete with games. Now, it's a little gray. A little, a little gray. gray. A little gray market. And by little, I mean jumping, screaming <laughs> past the middle line into the realm of the dirty, rotten, filthy, stinky pirates. <laughs> But I'll have to say, I think I've actually worked under the hood on this thing more than I've actually played games on it. But it's, it's, I've enjoyed it. And I just put out a little uh, helper for people that are trying to mess with it, I guess the best way to put it. It was called Coin Ops Next for Dummies. So there you go. So there's that. Um, we, uh, we did a little ARG show this week. Brent made a big comeback this week. Yeah, right? back and better than ever. Uh, he's Well, that's a low bar. Uh, so... This week's uh, uh, topic on ARG, the last game released for a console, both. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was actually f- kind of fun to look into because some of these, I was real surprised by a lot of the uh, last games released. We wanted to throw computers in there, but forget about it. You, that was impossible to try to figure that out. Yeah. And even consoles, there was a tons of gray area. We tried to stick to American consoles and then did our best. I will say the game Brent picked, which was for the N64, which was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, that seems to be pretty much definitively the last game released on that system. Uh, and I looked at Bonk 3 for the uh, Turbo Graphic 16, which is pretty much agreed upon the last game on that system. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, have, I, I know you you play the Tony Hawk games, don't you? I, Tony Hawk Three was my Tony Hawk game. That's the only game I really? spent. Really? That was the, why the third one, not the second one. It was just that was the one that was out when I had when I was I in the, in the mood to buy a Tony Hawk game. Yeah. And uh, and I loved it. I thought it was great, except for the music, man. Motorhead. 
How bad can you get when you're using yeah, motorheads? I, I, I noticed your jab and your reviews, and I badmouthed you accordingly, Bo, um, for your lack of musical taste. For those of you that have not watched or aren't current watchers of ARG, you just listen to it, as I often do, you owe it to yourself to check out the YouTube, uh, the YouTube version this week, and I'm sure going forward, ARG has reached new heights in production value. It looks spectacular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> it sucks slightly less. I'll, I'll give you that one. We're working on it. Um, oh, this is an important one. We got to mention this boat. This was the what? This was the bell of the ball this week. The uh, the John Boat of Carshaler Amigo Studio Tour 2020. You had all the luminaries of the internet that were descending on this video <laughs> to heap you with praise for your incredibly clean and beautiful, luxurious studio down there. Tell them about it. Yeah. So uh, Neil Retro Man Cave was doing a series uh, of uh, on his, I think it was on his second channel, where he was just taking people's, uh, he, you know, he does these daily streams when we're in, in lockdown. And uh, he said, if you have a game room, why don't you uh, send us a, a little video and I'll feature it. And so I, I just, I sort of walked around the uh, the, the studio and uh, talked about all the different the different things that I've got down here, went over the, the, the different computers that all of our fans have sent us over the years. Uh, my, my boxed uh, NES and, uh, uh, 2600 game collections. Um, I went through uh, and talked about all the wacky like Samsung Saturn stuff that I have, and uh, is is I, I enjoyed it. It was a fun sort of uh, walk around because a lot of times I come down here and I'm so laser focused on what I'm doing, I don't look around and remember. Hey, this is actually my dream room from when I was a kid, and I'm living in it. So uh, mm. it was, it's I was I was very very happy with the way this turned out. It's very low rent. The production quality is low. But if you're curious to see what it's like inside Amigo Studios, including a picture of the actual recording space where uh, I am sitting right now, uh, feel free to check that out. The actual recording space where Amigos is made? That's right. Good God, we should be selling tickets. It's like stepping inside Willy Wonka's factory. Is it? If Willy Wonka's factory was like in, in uh, uh, somewhere in uh, uh, Barbersville, and it was like an old Kmart, <laughs> something like that. Man, I, <laughs> I like the Barbersville Kmart. I thought that place was there cool. Go. I got some popcorn well, shrimp there one time. Let me tell you something. You can buy it cheap. <laughs> you can get it cheap right now. But it was a good video, Boat. I enjoyed that, and I've been there many times. You also didn't tell me about my awesome pinball score. Oh, yes. Uh, Aaron, for a time, held the top pinball score. I've since beaten it twice since, well, uh, yeah. since he left. You, you own the machine. Hey, I haven't been back since. Just saying. Listen, return of the king, baby. <laughs> I'll get back in here and take care of business. All right. That's all we got video-wise, Boatster. Oh, I, we know that's not entirely true. I did a, uh, a. We've both done some. Did you? Did you do any live streaming in the past week? I can't remember. No, I put up a, a, a small video of uh, the um, of the uh, strikes and spares, but we'll talk about that <laughs> shortly. So yeah, and then I, I did a live random video game uh, stream. I think it was last Friday actually over on Twitch. If you want to watch a, a goof play just a bunch of random games, and if you want to also see more goofy randomness, I'm going to do another one tonight. And I'm going to be focusing in on Warbird uh, for the uh, PC, which is the uh, spiritual successor to Edgar uh, Vigdal's uh, Good Deluxe Galaga. This game, I knew about this game for years, but everybody said I played it. It is the bomb. It is awesome, Bo. Mm. So I'll be playing the crap out of that time. Among, I think I might play some Legendist stuff too. So if you're into uh, live streaming, we're going to start doing a lot more of it. So hopefully, at least I am. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's turn over to this week's Amiga News. Yes. What do we got, Bo? It's been a good week for Amiga News. We got a couple stories here. Actually, we've just got one. Uh, well, so it's been a horrible <laughs> week for Amiga News. So um, our buddy recent uh, supporter of the show, Simulant, uh, has uh, created this. This is basic 68K Samba setup steps. Now, Samba is some sort of communication protocol. I remember this from my Mac days. I think they used something called Samba too. Um, uh -huh. I don't really know anything about what what to do to uh, what, what this means, but it's something Amiga related, Aaron. And when the news is slow, and you see Amiga pop up on something, you copy and paste <laughs> that bad boy into the Amiga you News You don't even read section. it. You just, you just give it a shot. 
I don't know what it is. So, so yeah, I've, I've yeah, it's it's it's, Samba, a, it's a way to transfer large files. That's 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 what it is. so you can use Samba across an, uh, a a uh, a uh, serial or parallel cable from the Amiga to another PC, or even use a Telnet BBS service to upload and download files. So man, you can even put it on punch cards. You can do whatever yeah. you want. Samba <laughs> allows you to rule the world, is what we're saying. So thank you, Simulant. If you're interested in that, just check the uh, the show notes at the bottom of the page. Uh, at the bottom of this video or in the podcast, and you, you can read all about it. Proto schooled you there. SMB protocol used by Microsoft OSs. There you go. Mm. So that, does that help? Does that, does that clear it, the muddy it water? It clears everything you? up. It's all clear to me now. <laughs> all right. Well, hopefully next week the gamble train will be a bit more um, fully laden. But for right now, he's going to pull off into the sunset. And we're going to talk about strikes and spares. Strikes and spares, but boy. This one, uh, I was going to say, I've not played this one. I'm sure you haven't played it. And uh, this was is a pretty obscure title, but it was not in... Uh, not only did I not have it on my actual machine, I didn't even have it on Amiga Forever or my front end. No one had it. I had to go fetch this thing off one of the mystery sites to get hold of it. So this is like... <laughs> this is a strange one. Uh, this came out in 93. Uh, one big disc, published by an outfit called Beyond... Mm -hmm. which apparently this is all they ever did. And the developer was, and the creator of this was a guy named Kurt, Kirk Bonner. This is all he ever did on the Amiga. Uh, and uh, this had, was an ECS OCS release. Uh, Strikes and Spare is a bowling game. Now, I saw two different versions of this. I saw, well, I, I saw one called Strikes and Spares. And then I saw Star Strikes and Spares Professional. Mm -hmm. So I played Strikes and Spares Professional. I did too. I, I'm assuming you did it. So, so that will be, well, that will preface this by saying this, we played, I don't, I can't imagine what the non, what the amateur version of this would have <laughs> not had in it. Maybe it didn't feature the ball or you just rolled the ball that had no pins. I can't imagine what would be gone. But we played the professional version because we're professionals, y'all. So let's get into this game as it were. Now, I told Box, I told Boat, I told Box before the show, I told Boat before the show that uh, I didn't get a whole lot of information on this game, so I actually printed the back cover of it. And part of the reason I did that was just to prove to myself that this actually came in a box, as opposed to being something you just download. Uh, the, uh, the, the big selling point of this bowling game is it would support eight uh, simultaneous players. And when I say that, I mean, you know, hot seat players, but eight people can have one Could game you imagine bowling. eight simultaneous bowling lanes on the screen that at once? That would be awesome. <laughs> that'd be, that's like the, it would be like the pro bowling tour. Yeah. You know, that'd be awesome. So this game starts up with sort of a digitized picture of bowling, and then you uh, take care of your business here. And so what do you do? Well, you, uh, you can make a guy, uh, sort of, and you can bowl, and you can uh, bowl with your buddies where you can bowl against the computer, and you can bowl against eight different mixes of the two, all right, or the three, yourself, the computer, and another guy, all right? Um, when I say make your own guy, I mean, you put your name in, you sort of pick the color of your balls, uh, and that's pretty... That's it. <laughs> there's not much else, is there? There's no character... Cre there's no Skyrim-like character creator in this one. So, let's just... Let's cut to the chase here, Boat, Okay. If you want league bowling, uh, if you want special features, uh, if you want a Wii bowling level of, uh, of randomness in terms of like the amount of pins you're going to be playing against, if you want uh, to pick the weight of your ball, for example, if you want to make your own designed ball, that's out. You're doing none of that. This is a straight up bowling. There's no, this is, there's no fluff. There's no uh, there's no extra stuff. It's just the bowling. It will if you if you enter yourself as a character, it will keep track of your games and and your average. That's pretty much the extent of what it does. Am I missing anything here, Bo? You're missing nothing. Okay, so we've covered that. So there is nothing else. Uh, even the menus are just there's you nothing can. Going well, on. I mean, you can choose whether. And and Frodo points out in the chat that the uh, the original, the non-professional version, does not let you color your balls and does not let you choose how much or how little music or sound effects you want. 
Which, you know, I turned the music, I'll, I'll turn sa the sound There's no music, are, it's just sound effects. Yeah, but the chat, the sound choices are some sound or lots of yeah, sound. Yeah, some I mean, or all. <laughs> and so I turned it on all, and all was pretty sparse. Yeah. So I'm thinking, what was some? What's that going to do? Just occasionally hear a cricket right. or something? I mean, <laughs> somebody's no sweeping up behind you. <laughs> uh, so. Turn the, you can turn the pin setter on and off. You can, you can also, there's uh, once you get to the actual bowling game, you can. there's a separate screen where you can just look at the scores, like in the middle of a game. So we've established that there is no uh, uh, support structure for this bowling game. This is just bowling. Right. So a bowling game lives and dies on its bowling boat, right? Mm -hmm. Duh. So when I loaded this up, I'm going to give you my experience straight out of the gate. Okay. Give it to me. Because I've played many bowling games, boat over the years. And I thought to myself, well, we got the Amiga here. What's, what's the Amiga got? It's got a freaking mouse, right? This sucker's going to be mouse-driven, and we're gonna. it's going to be one of those gimmicks where you just sort of you know, push the mouse like that, maybe, and the ball. Uh, it's not, mm -hmm. That's not what it no. is. And so I thought to myself, well, okay, it's not gonna, that's not what it is. What the heck is it? Well, what you've got here is someone must have played like a, a, a world-class leaderboard or something, and was like, you know, we're going to make the effectively the bowling equivalent of that. That's sort of what they did. Well, this, this is, is this is really very similar to if you ever played um, Super Monkey Ball bowling, the mini game in in Super Monkey Ball. I have. It's it's it. very similar to that. The only difference is is that you instead of using the you know the left and right triggers to control your spin and stuff like that, you're setting all the spin and everything else ahead of time. Yeah. So what you what ends up happening here is that you're it's basically in between rolls, you you're tinkering with a bunch of settings. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. So th they should call this professional setting tinkerer because that's effectively what I felt like I was doing. And eventually you would just get sick of tinkering with these, and so you just try to time it the best you can. So here's how it works: first, you position your ball with the mouse if you want. There's also arrows that you can use to position it, which I thought was odd, but they're there. They're if, you there. Want to use the, mm -hmm. if you want to click on the arrows as opposed to just moving the ball manually, you can do that. You've also got a gauge at the top for speed. This lets you set how fast the, or how hard you can go at like hose level, like a, like a bazooka, or you can pitch it like you're like my kid. You know, like w w super wimpily down the line. Uh, you can also set the amount of curve. I always like games that let you just set the curve ahead of time. Boy, it was like that in real life, yeah. where you could set the curve, uh, and you could and you could set the curve uh, a little, a lot, and you could set the curve for each direction. Now, we should also mention there are no lefties or righties. That's all out the window. So you sort of you you're going to determine the curve based on your pin layout. Uh, you've also got a uh, uh, a uh, uh, a place that lets you pick the color of your ball. You basically have three balls you can choose from. I don't think this does anything except change the ball color, does it? Both? No, I mean, no, there's, there's, there's no, no weights weight or anything listed. like that. Now, I yeah. will say one of the options you left out was you do have the option to either show the pin setter or hide the pin setter. Yeah. Don't forget that's, that. That's, that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's not important at all. Oh, okay. It's the world's like, dumbest yeah. option. Why would you not want to show the pin setter? That's half the fun of bowling it's, it's is watching the, thing full, watching the thing come down and they're all there. It's still magic to me. I saw that option. I was like, Whoa, what is this? It's a lot like the sound <laughs> option. It's like, what am I looking at here? So those aren't even really options. So once you actually have got all your bowling set up, it's time to the, for the bowling. Mm -hmm. boat. And so what happens is a, is a little arrow. You know, every bowling alley has those little arrows right. on them. You know, a little arrow will float out right in front of those things and just slowly go left to right now. That arrow will move slower, quicker, depending on how you've got your speed set up. So if you're like a, if you're gonna go out there and bazooka the ball and you've got the speed turned up full blast, then that arrow goes quicker. So it's sort of simulating that the difficulty in aiming when you shoot the ball down the alley with a with a cannon, mm -hmm. right? Where if you use like a feather touch, it's much slower. Right. And then uh, you let and once the ball is where you want it, you hit the uh, button. And the ball shoots down the alley. Now, uh, this part of the game, I didn't like. And then we get to a part I also didn't like, which was the actual visualization of the ball and the pins. The pins are way down there at the bottom of the alley. There's no scene where you, there's no scene where you see the ball enter. There's no scene from overhead. There's no uh, uh, there's no good visual representation of what's happening. 
you sort of just have to look kind of squinty. You can't like I, I'd swear to you I'd have a strike and random pins just don't fall down. Well, it's it's uh, not it's unlike like bowling that. in that regard. <laughs> Boy, you got that right. <laughs> Except I, I have fun actually bowling. <laughs> So I've been jabbered. You're get throw toss in here. On okay. This thing, but. Well, here's the problem with this game. Okay. The oh, when I yeah. when I and this is I mean this is the number one problem with this game. Um, when I sat down to record this video, I I bowled three strikes in a row. Okay. Yeah. I didn't do anything. I didn't set my my speed, my movement. I I plopped my ball right down in the middle. I lined up the arrow to just off center on the left side of the arrow and bowled three strikes in a row. If yeah. you can do that every single time, you can bowl a perfect game. So if you can do that right off the bat on sort of the default setting for everything, why bother have why bother having any of the other options on there? Did you but you see one thing I noticed is the lack of consistency in this game. I didn't think uh, it was very consistent at all with the rolls. Like, I stopped trying to curve the ball because it was so wildly inconsistent. I just stopped. I just yeah, like, now, I, I guess, you know, on this, on your second, you know, on your second frame, or on your second round, whatever they call it in bowling, if you if you did miss some pins and you want to try and pick up a split or whatever, however, the pins don't fly like they should. Like, if you need to pick up a 7-10 split, there's no way you can do it because the pins, they just fall down. It's not, you never see them ricochet across the aisle, ever. They should have called this game Strikes and Splits mm -hmm. because you've got splits coming out the wazoo on this thing. Mm -hmm. And splits, you don't see that. I mean, it's not like you never see them, but I mean, it seems like every time I rolled the ball, and, it, and they weren't easy ones either. Right. It was like seven, ten splits at the beat the band. Uh, a very unrealistic pin action. I agree with you on that. And uh, it was hard to, it was hard to actually tell what was happening as an added bonus. It just, I didn't like any of that. Now, did you try playing against the computer or with a computer opponent? No, I never did. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. What was that like? That's part of it. Well, there's three settings. There's uh, uh I can't there's like beginner, amateur, and pro, I think are what the things are. Sorry, these things are killing me. Um at beginner or the at the lowest setting, this thing is a, it's like a, a pushover. I mean it, it didn't I think it scored like a sixty seven or something. Pathetic. Uh at the highest setting, it still wasn't great. I think it bowled when I bowled a computer with the highest setting, I think it was getting around in the one sixties. Somewhere in that area, mm -hmm. you know. So even if that's the highest conceivable setting, it's still not that good, right? Uh, you know. So I was surprised that I thought the computer would come in there and thump me. I think this thing just is built to. Um, I mean, if you came, it's one of those games where the fun is not worth the effort because what you've got to do is you've got to tweak so many settings in between rounds, in between frames, and in between uh, rolls that it makes it less fun. Uh, now, if you could if you could set up a couple... Like presets were, be, or what you want. That, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, asking for presets, this is a real stretch. Yeah. But if, if you could do that, it would be more fun. But listen, we both love World Class Leaderboard, and World Class Leaderboard is similar in its stat and what you can do, but I mean, it's so much more refined and so much, uh, uh, but bowling is more of a bang bang sport than golf. Mm -hmm. You don't want to sit there tweaking a bunch of crap for ten minutes, right? Before you uh, get the ball, you know. You know, you know I, 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 I think that I can forgive almost all of this stuff though if this game had any ounce of charm whatsoever. This is about as bare bones as you can possibly imagine. Yes, yes. If they would have, if they would have even just had your little guy out there, like give me a physical representation of my player, you know, make him and let me change the color of his hair or something like. Let me change his bowling shirt or something like that and show him out there before before the bowling, you know, before the bowling commences. Or maybe when you get a strike, maybe throw something on the screen. You know, it's a video game. You know, like give me some confetti or something like that. Maybe they do that in the bowling alley. What right. They start the little exactly. Scoreboard? rockets and stuff and your guy dances right. or a turkey walks yeah. out so you know this it's just it's inconceivable how in 1993 a game could be commercially released that is this bereft of any charm whatsoever yeah this thing this is like uh uh i mean you ever played capcom bowling the arcade oh yeah ball? yeah 
listen, that game's not what I would call graphically outstanding or anything, but I mean, it's fun. Mm-hmm. They do a good job of making bowling fun. Mm-hmm. You know, not not to mention the fact that they use a, a trackball. You could do the same thing on here if you wanted to. Uh, I think this is the only bowling game I've played on the Amiga. Uh, so I'm a ho- and I know there are other ones. So I'm hoping they're. I mean, they're better than this. But this is just, you know, this is like a, 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 a lukewarm, a room temperature glass of water. Mm-hmm. It's not exciting. It's not thrilling. It barely quenches your thirst. Uh, I mean, I love bowling, and maybe it's because here we are in 2020. We've seen Wii bowling. We've seen all the cool stuff you could do with bowling. So when you trot out one of these old uh, things, it just looks so uh, pathetic and weak. Uh, yeah, you really uh, need that charm uh, to uh, bring out something extra, you know? I don't buy that though. I think even if I didn't, if I even if I'd never seen Wii bowling or monkey ball bowling or anything like that. I would still look at this and be like, boy, there's not much to this thing at all. I used to have a a shareware, uh, sort of like bar games collection, sports games collection. There was darts in there, there was bowling. I think there were a couple other things. And it was exactly like this. I mean, it was just, the it was, but but again, it was shareware, it was like free, so. um, This this is the kind of bowling you you would think that you might see in a package with some other mini yeah, games. Yeah, like if they would have packaged this up with some other things, we're talking, it's a different world then. Yeah, and also, I'll, I mean, let's, let's uh, listen, normally I don't like to crush a game, but this game needs good crushing, <laughs> and I'm not done yet. Let's see, the sound is crap. This is the Amiga. Where's the jaunty tune mm-hmm. or something, for God's sakes? Just have me hear someone say, give me a hot dog, right. something, T- you know, anything. You know, or someone say, ah, oh, you got lucky. Yeah, something, yeah. All right, secondly, the menus in this look like so like like I made it with like Amo. This is this is the, it's that Blitz Basic look that you saw in uh, in Super no, Skid Marks. That it's that I'm that Blitz play. Basic Listen, menu. That can be made to look good though. Garbage. This is no. Garbage. I mean, even when you type in your own name on that on the screen where it saves your bowlers, mm-hmm. it just sucks. Yeah. The names suck. The screen sucks. All that stuff sucks. The only part of this game that looks even remotely okay is the actual bowling part, and it's not that great either. But compared to the menu system, it looks like a million bucks. Yeah, but maybe that was their goal. I think the lanes, you know? the lanes look adequate. You know, like it's they okay. don't look bad. But you're right. I mean, as a as a bowling game, it it it, re, it meets the minimum requirements that you would require for a bowling game. So if you're looking for just something just to, this is like something you put on your desktop back in the '90s. Just to kill off an afternoon when your boss ain't looking, put a boss key in there, you know, mm-hmm. and you're playing some bowling. But other in 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 uh, uh, on the Amiga with all the tools you've got, all the things you could do, this ain't gonna cut it. I give this the old dud, but I didn't like it at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I, in fact, I would say it was one of the least favorite things we've played on the show. I, I was when you botched bowling to this degree, you botched it. I didn't think it was also good at actually bowling. You know, but at top of everything else. But I mean, it looked okay. It sort of, you could sort of bowl. Eh, I didn't like it, boat. Um, I actually found reviews on this boat. <laughs> you could believe it. So the people at Lemon, far more forgiving than me, they gave this thing a 6.83. Uh, here's one we don't hear every day Amiga World reviewed this boat. Amiga World. Amiga World. It's a world of Amiga. They gave it an A. They were on yeah, the take. That, that magazine sucks. They were on the take. Amiga Power gave this three and a half. That's so I don't maybe listen. What do we have? We have we left the planet here where this is getting an A? No. Well, okay, maybe even in '93 this was not. Maybe good. this is the only bowling game for the Amiga. That's the only and thing. They, they, and maybe the reviews were like, finally a bowling game for the Amiga. Yeah, I guess I you know. I, and of yeah. course '93, you know, all the magazines were trying to get people not to sell their Amigas at that point. So they were like, yeah, there's still good games. Look at Strikes and Spares. It's awesome. Oh, listen, I don't know about that. I didn't find this on eBay at all. Did we get any, uh, did we get any uh, action, any Discord on this we one? We got quite a few reviews on this one, Aaron. Really? Frodo I and, expect scathing. Frodo and L writes, our newest Clive's Club, or Clive's Club, our newest uh, AGSC member uh, writes, the graphics are okay. Everything looks the way it should. The sounds are pretty good too, if nothing special. Control is easy enough and the ball reacts the way I would expect it to. So much so that my average is very similar to my average when I went bowling regularly, around 200. The the one thing this game has that I miss in many other bowling games is the option to keep a profile on disc. Eight out of 10. Jason Warns, and Jason Warns- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Eight out of 10? Eight out of 10. 
8 out of 10. Oh, Frodo. My God, sir. Uh, Jason Warns, uh, who suggested this game for the AGSC, uh-huh. says, uh, This was a surprisingly easy game to pick up and play. The controls were easy to understand. The graphics were meh. The sound effects were okay. It would have been more immersive to have a bit of ambient bowling alley noise in the background, but that doesn't kill the playability. With up to 8-player hot seat multiplayer, it has its eyes on being a fun party game. Overall, if you're looking to scratch that bowling itch, it's not bad at all. 7.5 out of 10. Let me tell you something. If I went to a party, let's say, well, you know those big parties you have at your basement, mm-hmm. and you break this out and say, all right, everybody, gather around. <laughs> now, here's the main event of the evening. We're going to play three rounds of eight-player this. <laughs> I would throttle you and beat you down. And you deserve it, and you and you know you deserve That's it. That's true. That's true. Pixels of Dawn writes, I like a good bit of bowling every now and then, so I was intrigued by this title. The gameplay is pretty solid, and there was no competition in the bowling genre at the time, but the graphics are poor for 1993, and the sound is pretty much non-existent, without even some vague atmosphere. Even with that in mind, this game had the opportunity to go all out with options, leagues, and tournaments, but it has none of this either, not even giving you the option to pick the weight of your ball. Unfortunately, foreknowledge of Team 17's vastly superior Kingpin, which was released two years later, makes it hard to enjoy this on its own merits, even if it was the only game in town at the time. A turkey, and I don't mean three strikes in a row, four out of ten. Bam. Bam. And and finally, Chris Fold says, A game I have had on my list of games so bad I will play it so you don't have to video series. (laughs) <laughs> terrible graphics, awful sound, and terrible gameplay. One of the worst sports games on the Amiga. Three out of ten. So I was getting worried, Vote. Those first couple of scores, I thought, maybe we've lost our minds. Quite a, ride, yeah. a wide variety of scores there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm with the three. Now, Aaron, this thing has got to be selling for gangbusters on the old eBay, isn't it? it? it not on there. They, not, not a copy. Like I said, I printed out the back of the box. Just to prove to myself it had a box. Because <laughs> this is, this. listen, we both talked about this early in the week. We never talked about these games. But I, you said something. I was like, my God, this is like a shareware title, mm-hmm. Boat. Except worse. And, you're, and you concur. I did. So I did. For once, we're on the same page, Boat. Um, so uh, before we move on to the end part of the show, uh, I thought we'd go ahead and make a, a special Amigos announcement. Uh there is a change in the Amigos Retro Gaming Network of podcasts. Um, I uh, have recently acquired a new job, and uh, it's going to require significantly more um, time than my previous job, and uh, considerably more travel. And so uh, I am not going to be able to continue with the non-Amigos podcast. So fret not, Amiga fans. Amigos will continue forever. But uh, our Sinclair, the Coco Show, <laughs> and 1200XL are taking a, uh, a hiatus. Um, it's not to say that we will never do any of those shows ever again, but for right now, uh, the uh, weekly, weekly shows will cease other than Amigos, and uh, the Patreon accounts have been shut down. So it's, a real, that's, that's, it's great news about your job. I mean, this is a great job. Uh, it is a bummer. And we, we actually, we've pondered this quite a bit, uh, haven't we, both? We have. And we, ban- well, I mean, there was not really much of an argument or uh, or a, uh, there wasn't a lot of wiggle room uh, into uh, what could be done. Uh, we've talked about uh, even bringing Brent on to do one of these shows maybe, but for now, we're just going to shutter them and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens down the, down the road. Uh, but uh, it sucks. That part sucks, Boat. Uh, we both, we love all those shows, uh, and uh, it's going to be a bummer. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what are you going to do? You know, it's the way, it's the way it goes. Uh, I will say, uh, me and the brand, will, ARG will be unaffected. We'll just keep, we're going to keep the ball rolling on that, and we're going to try to uh, integrate a little bit of the other three shows. We're going to kind of inject a little bit of that in ARG, uh, over the summer, so if you want to pop in uh, Sunday when Brent lays out the plan, uh, we're going to try to at least so people that are enjoy the Coco, the Atari uh, eight bits, and the Spectrum don't get left left out the, in the in the dirt. We're going to try to to uh, get a little more of that content on ARG 
Uh, but uh, I suspect that we'll be back at some point, somewhere down the line, and, and we're going to try to maybe get an uh, episode here and there over, you know, in, you know, whenever time allows. Uh, but uh, you know, hey, you got to do what you got to do, boat. And like I said, the job is going to be great. So uh, congratulations, and I'm sure you'll do well. Well, thank you, young young man. Um, speaking of thanks, we want to thank all the fine folks that have joined us here live in in Twitch, twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Frodo NL is here with us. Hermski. Pixels at Dawn, doing a great job modding it up. Uh, Mind Rax is here, throwing up emojis like it's going out of style. Um, let's see, Polyester Lynx, Mitsuyama, uh, Edvin Helen from the Man Cave. Uh, Picard 2010, Paul Kitching. Uh, thank you guys so much for chilling with us at the, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't say what my new job was. So I'm actually gonna be working in higher education administration. Um, West Virginia State University has hired me to be their director of institutional research, which means that I'm going to be doing a lot of comparative research uh, among the departments in West Virginia State and the uh, other uh, nearby colleges and universities to see what we can do about increasing enrollment and making our student experience better. So that's the new job. It's a big deal. It's, it's, diff it's going to be different than being a middle school band director. That's for mm. sure. All right. So, um, anyway, we want to uh, thank all the people that have supported us on Twitch. I did not print those out this week, so you know you know who you are in your heart. And uh, we also want to uh, thank our... Pa oh, actually, we want to congratulate the winners of last week's Patreon Song Challenge. Uh, last week's Patreon song was I Can Tell That We Are Gonna Be Friends by The White Stripes. Uh, do you know why this song is famous, Aaron? No. This is the uh, intro song. This is the song that plays during the intro credits of Napoleon Dynamite. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, it's funny because when you played those awesome videos, I don't get to hear it. Right, right. So I never even got to hear last week's song. Yeah. So if I heard it, I'd probably recognize it. Yeah. I know who the White Stripes are. I got that going oh, for yeah, me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to congratulate Kate Fox, Mitsuyama, and the Slow Norris. And uh, the Slow Norris told me to tell you that it is the peak of college music, the White Stripes. That uh, I, Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know, but it's it's up there. It's up there for sure. Uh, we want to welcome some new members of the Amigos Game Selection Committee, Aaron. Um, we are joined this week by our Frodo NL and O'Brien's Retro and Vintage. So uh, both of those guys, we welcome them on board. The Amigos Game Selection Committee is the Patreon committee that helps select the games that we play every week. These guys are stand-up guys. You know, Frodo coming over from R. Sinclair and O'Brien's been with us since the beginning. The beginning, yeah, I, I, you know, for Frodo, it's uh, uh, he's he is a, a force. We see him all the time, and and O'Brien's. When I saw his name pop on Discord this morning, I about fell out of my chair because we've had O'Brien's with us forever, and uh, uh, but I've never actually gotten to chat with him in real time, you know. So that was that was awesome. So we're glad to have both you guys come down and, and help us out. Yeah, with all the help we can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, this week, uh, I uh, in between all the stuff with, with my new job and actually working on what is sure to be the most epic Patreon song of all time uh, for next week, this is a multi-week uh, effort that uh, the Patreon band is putting together. Um, I am just going to uh, read this week's Patreon list. So we appreciate all these people who are proud Patreon supporters. If you're interested in supporting Amigos, you can go to patreon.com com slash amigos podcast and uh, help keep us on the air we want to thank cowbird boy joel fuchs lane denson luke hudson john cook rich drury roshi frodo and l soul incisor tech mage zebedee's magic roundabout jurgen mr cola daniel williams bernard lucas jerry dennington zorg Lub, commodore kid reflection simon letch captain crispy kilobytes and caffeine mike w gary heather Free Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobsterminator, 10 Minute Amiga Retro Cast, Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cave, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Etter, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Laramore, Andy Craig, Sean Zoe, Barkbit, Roland Burke, 
Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, Leaf Kaland, Alan Kebab, Chicote, Level Lord, John Marshall, <laughs> Matthew Perrone, Ricky DeRocher, Creepy Dead Boy, Figgy, CTZ, The Slow, Norris, Stefan, Sorgon, Mortensen, Edvin Helland, Blendo, 75, Christopher Hassal, Ravi Abbott, Chris Folds, Dreamcatcher, Laurent Giroux, Graham W. Bebke, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim, Tommy, Humbertstad, Daniel Bigston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, and all together now, Kill Bjorn Barman. You know, that list is so long that you may have to start get, like ripping out operas and stuff. <laughs> That's what I was you thinking. Know what I'm saying? It used to be I mean, that As it... you read that, I was, like, I was just sitting here, I was like, I can't believe this list. It's Santa Claus would salute you. It for that used list. to be that I could just pick a song out of nowhere and just start singing it, but these these days, because the list is so long, sometimes the song is too short for the list. You may have to get like a hard roll for that kind of list. That was a heck. That's a mighty list. We appreciate you guys, man. Just <laughs> stepping up big time. Yeah, that's bafflingly long. I can't <laughs> believe it. Well, Aaron, next week on Amigos, it's platformer week. Oh, these are always dead. Yeah. Now, this week, uh, Pixels at Dawn has suggested a game that the Game Selection Committee voted on, Traps and Treasure. This was a game oh, that was yeah. uh, highly rated by Kim Justice on her Amiga Platformers That Don't Suck video. And uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to uh, digging in. It's got an interesting history, and I'm looking forward to giving it a, a spin. Yeah, yeah. That, I have to say, that is intriguing, because I saw that Kim Justice piece. And I thought to myself, you know, I've never seen this game before. Uh, we'll have to get so good. Excellent. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be good. All right, guys. We will see you next week with another episode of Amigos. Until then, adios. adios.